Yo, GPG here. Welcome back to another video. Which of these are better? To be buried alive by strange men, a husbando kakegurui, or Eminem with glasses? Imaginary is one of the rarest elements at the start of the game, with our only one being well Yang in 1.0. Fast forward to 2.1, and already, Imaginary Element has covered every single role except for erudition. This begs the question, which of these imaginary husbando supports are actually worth it for your account? We're going to be diving into each of their kits respectively, their values according to their plethora of playstyles, and how are they going to hold in the future. Now, for the supports that I choose, I don't include Yu Kong because, well, who plays her. And also because Yukong's full potential can only be unlocked if she has her E6. And I'm assuming that most of you have one of these characters available. Except for Aventurine, you know, because he's not out yet. My name is GPJ, and let's get into it. Starting off with our coffin man, Locha. Locha is regarded as one of the most comfortable healers and sustainers in the game with his actual value of being a true skill point positive character. By skill point positive, I mean he regenerates skill points more than he uses it. Now, to recap his kit, he has a cleanse from his skill which can trigger automatically when any ally gets to or below 50% HP. For each use of a skill or ult, he gains a stack up to two stacks that counts towards his healing field in which everyone can get healed just by one ally attacking an enemy. His ult also cleanses one buff from enemies and it deals attack percent scaling to all enemies. And also, he's our only healer so far that scales off attack and has an auto 70% crowd control resistance. Locha has proven time and time again with each added sustainer that when it comes to comfortability and reliability, no one is better than our auto. A true autoplay connoisseur that is reliable throughout Honkai Star Rail's ever-changing meta. However, he only has an increased resistance to crowd control for himself and his healing that scales from attack means that his own survivability is an issue when dealing with enemies that constantly crowd controls the team or deal massive damage while getting an extra turn. The example that comes to mind are the Aventurine boss and the Memory Zone meme. Locha is still a very very valuable unit due to the fact that no one in the game can come close to his level of consistency. If you have Locha, then almost guaranteed that you don't need any other healer for most of the scenario. Let's move on to our gambling man, Aventurine. Aventurine is our very first sub DPS shielder that, like Locha, can be played with only using his skill point sparingly. To recap his kit, based on a livestream and a story quest trial, he applies shield from his skill to all allies that increases their effect resistance up to a certain amount and gives him crowd control resistance as well with a 2 turn cooldown. For each attack that hits his shield, it'll give him a stack of blind bet. Now blind bet is his talent that has a max of 7 points that counts towards his follow up attack. If the enemies hit Aventurine, he'll, he'll gain 2 stacks of blind bet. Max count of blind bet are 7 and the amount that can be stored actively is 10 meaning that if you hit 10 or if you hit 11 you'll consume 7 points and then you'll only have 3 left over for the next rotation now if blind bet reaches 7 or more aventurine launches a follow up attack 7 times to a random enemy now it is a bounce attack which means that each hit is random his ultimate which scales from his defense, increases his crit damage taken to a single enemy and gives him a random amount of blind bet points up to 7. 
which means that let's say if you have six points and then you gain seven points you'll gain a maximum of 10 you'll do his follow-up attack and then you have three points left over for his next rotation he can also apply shield to all allies when his talent or follow-up attack is triggered as well as gaining blind bet points when any ally launches a follow-up attack up to three times and it resets on the start of Aventurine's turn. He is also incentivized to go all in on defense percent, considering that he gains a crit rate boost based on how much defense he has over a certain limit. Aventurine is our first true sub DPS shielder, and he looks to be a very formidable support for a follow up attack teams that can help quicken many follow up attack interactions while still being a solid sustain for all team comps with his effect resistance boost, easily usable shield, and his ultimate debuff application for the Ratio and Acheron teams. His visible downside so far is that, unlike Fu Xuan, his crowd control resistance only applies to himself and it has a 2 turn cooldown. Furthermore, his gambling mechanics and design means that in order to maximize his kit value in a fight, you just need to be lucky. In other words, just win. Welt sets the tone early at the start of the game by being both our only direct character from Honkai Impact 3rd like I mentioned, and a premium imaginary unit with a gameplay that can be summarized as a jack of all trades. He has a bounce attack that applies slow, hits one time to a target, and then two times to other enemies. This attack is a bounce attack, meaning that the next two attacks is random. If he attacks any slow enemies, he'll gain additional imaginary damage that scales from his attack percent. Kinda like a Ting Yun additional damage thing. He can also apply imprisonment, and vulnerability debuff from his ultimate that can both act as a delay and consistent debuffer, making him a pseudo sustainer if you build him as so. For a Nihility unit, he also has one of the best scaling multipliers for a character that's main job is to apply debuffs to enemies. Wealth is a true jack of all traits, master of none type of unit where he can fit into multiple roles in different teams with consistent successes, provided of course you've equipped him with the necessary relics and stats. He works great as a sub DPS, that spams his skills occasionally, applying multiple debuffs fitting for Dr. Ratio and Acheron teams, and as one of the best sustaining units in the game with his immediate delay from his BBC or Big Black Cane. A growing trend surrounding Welp is his place in a full-on non-sustain comps, where his role is to use his ult when the enemies are about to attack, potentially relieving us for a sustain and then can go all in on damage. Welp's main weakness, however, is that due to being a jack of all trade, master of none type of character, when you're going to maximize his value on one side, you're going to minimize his value on the other. You can't have it both ways or three ways. If you're going all in on his damage, then you can't really go in on his debuffing capabilities. And if you're going all in on his debuffing capabilities, then you can't really go all in on damage. Unless of course you're just really lucky on your relics, then therefore I'm, I'm the clown. Overall, when you're thinking of imaginary sustains, all three of these characters came to mind immediately. You just need to choose which one of these units that has a potential for the future of your account. But again, if you want to enjoy the game long term, just pull for whoever you like. Overall, this is just my thoughts on the three of them. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Maybe in the future, they'll have another place in the meta that is so far unexplored. Maybe you have some theories regarding what they can do. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe. I have a Ko-fi link in the description if you're wanting to support my work. And as always, see you soon. Bye bye!